Hi, this is Jim Stone with Front Range Volleyball. And what we're going to focus on today is developing a good arm swing for younger players. And you know, after coaching collegiately for 30 years, I can say with a lot of certainty that by the time an athlete got to me at age 18 or so, if they had a bad arm swing, it was literally impossible to change. You know, so it's, it underscores the importance of what's going on when the athletes are age 12, 13, 14, and making sure that they develop good arm swing mechanics. By default, I think the body does what is the easiest motion. And, and as coaches, what's the easiest motion may not be proper mechanics. So we have to really focus on what are proper spiking mechanics. And I've been coaching club for two, two seasons now and I see some commonalities of issues that uh, relative to arm swing that we really as a profession need to address. Um, the thing that we're going to underscore in the, in the video today is that um, the arm swing is basically a throwing motion and we have to have proper throwing mechanics. That's one. Two is we have to make a priority in terms of handball contact and I see so many players when they attack the ball uh, you know there's side spin, there's back spin and they, they obviously do not have proper hand ball mechanics so we'll focus on that a little bit uh, but more than anything else actually two things more than anything else one is we, we have to, especially at the younger ages encourage players to hit the ball hard and recruit as many muscle groups as we can to facilitate hitting the ball hard. Now if the focus is hitting the ball hard, there may be times when uh, the accuracy becomes a casualty of that and as a coach I'm okay with that because it's more important to me that they get big body mechanics going into the ball. If my focus is hitting it in every time, my mechanics get smaller. I, I jump like this, my arm doesn't come back, I do a lot of this stuff and every ball will go in bounds but you're putting a cap on how good that player is going to get and they're developing horrendous throwing mechanics. So that, you know, hitting the ball hard is going to be a priority. Thing. We want to hit the ball hard, we want to make sure that their elbow comes back and they get a lot of upper body rotation into the ball and we want to focus on handball contact. So those are the things that we're going to work on today in terms of just some simple drills that you might put into your coaching repertoire. This video will focus on arm swing mechanics and here are photos of the direction that we'd like to have your players head. Notice the elbows being drawn back and how that facilitates large amounts of upper body rotation that will transfer a lot of force into the attack. So it's going to be elbow back and rotate the hips and shoulders into the swing and all these all these volleyball stars are doing the, the exact same thing. Here's a shot of hip flexion that's driving the upper body through the ball. Here's what we're going to focus on wrist snap and having a loose relaxed wrist. And lastly, how the non-hitting arm is being drawn to the body midline. The first thing we're going to do and a major priority that we want to focus on is just handball contact. And I think one of the things that I've seen which I perceive as being a weakness is that players, especially younger players, don't make good contact with the ball. And I'm not sure if coaches, they might be taking this for granted, but I think it's a point of emphasis in terms of having fingers spread and a relaxed wrist. And I think this is a handball contact motion that has to be practiced as much as any other skill. So one of the first things we do, and actually we do this every day in practice, is players will grab a ball and they go 50 contacts with hand going underneath the ball and then 50 with hand going over the top of the ball. So Taylor's going to demonstrate first just hand going underneath the ball. And as she, she just wants to keep the ball in play. Wide fingers and her wrist is relaxed. And as you notice as she's doing this, the ball is spinning back towards her. So we don't want people batting the ball. We want them rolling their wrist under the ball. The second thing we do is the same motion. Go ahead, Taylor. Same motion. Fingers are spread. 
hand goes over the top of the ball, so it's from below to above the ball. And she's trying to get top spin on the ball and roll her hand over the top. Okay, and it's not important, that's good, it's not so much important that she does 50 in a row. What we're trying to get the player to, to do and get a feel for, both with the hand coming under, hand going over, is a relaxed hand, fingers spread, and as they touch the ball, there's a curling motion with the wrist. Next thing we do, and it's kind of the same concept of what we just completed in terms of hand going over the top of the ball, and this is a little bit more controlled, where the player will hold the ball out in front of them and really accentuate spread fingers. She contacts the ball with her entire hand, the palm, not the heel of her hand, and then rolls her wrist over the top. First, we're going to demonstrate what we don't want, but we, but you see a lot, especially with younger players, is the, the, the hand is very closed, the wrist is stiff, and if you can hear the sound that it makes, and I'll, I'll keep quiet for a second. <laughs> Okay, contrast that with kind of the direction we're heading where it's a relaxed wrist, go ahead, whole hand on the ball and she really rolls her hand over the top. Okay, and you want your players to finish like that with the wrist being rolled over the top of the ball and a nice loud noise where you can tell that her whole hand is contacting the ball. And again, this can be part of a warm-up. You can do 25, keep going, you can do about 25 or 30 of these, you know, in 90 seconds. But I think it gives the player a good feel for how you want your hand to contact the ball and the sound that you want when your hand does contact the ball. Good. The athlete has to have a very relaxed motion as they're attacking the ball. I think if they're stiff with their shoulder or stiff with their wrist, they lose acceleration, they lose speed, they lose ball control. So everything is relaxed. And to try and focus on this, what we'll have the player do is hold the ball about waist high, somewhat extended in front of them, and they'll shake, shake their hands, shake their wrists, so it's a relaxed motion. And then in one motion, they'll just, just using elbow wrist snap, drive the ball off the floor, and you want to have a competition maybe with players how who can hit it the highest off the floor so Taylor will demonstrate this so she shakes her wrist and then it's off the floor elbow wrist into the floor as high as possible off the floor okay again the key points are it's elbow wrist so we want when we release the ball we want to keep it low if we toss the ball up then I'm going to start incorporating my shoulder so keep the toss low and it's just this motion. To underscore that attacking a volleyball is a throwing motion very similar to other sports. If you make the analogy of a baseball pitcher, you'll see a baseball pitcher open their shoulders and then they, when they throw, they're using rotation and flexion with their hips to give more speed to the ball. If you see a tennis player, they'll toss and as they swing, there's a pikey motion with her upper body. And we want to incorporate those same principles with a volleyball attack in terms of we don't want the attacker to just go up and use their arm. Uh, they'll hit it in bounds, but at high levels of competition, you have to hit the ball hard as well. So we want to get rotation, and we also want to get flexion as we're attacking the ball. Rotation is of primary importance. Flexion is of secondary importance but it's also something that can be taught. And I think you'll see all the good hitters, especially internationally, they have this going on as they hit. Just like a baseball pitcher, a tennis server, an overhead clear in badminton, it's all the same things. So what we do to work on this is we'll have Taylor stand on one foot, her left foot, her right knee is bent at 90 degrees. She'll toss to herself, go through the attacking motion, and as she comes through with her upper body, she also comes through with her lower body. So she's working on this motion as she attacks the ball. So it'll look like this. That's, that's great, that's great. Okay, so one hand toss, and she comes through and drives her, her uh, right leg forward as her arms coming through. 
Okay, and she finishes with her hand over the top of the ball and some core flexion. So again, this is just a, a simple drill that you can incorporate into your warm up, but it'll give your players the, the feel of having some upper body flexion as well as torque coming into the attack, and both of them are important in terms of maximizing your arm speed and hand speed going into the ball. Okay, the next thing we're gonna do is, is do what is done in about every gym in the country, and that is just work on a uh, ball off the floor against the wall. The thing that we really wanna focus on though is again, our, our first priority is hand ball contact. So we don't need to go through a full arm swing yet. All she's doing is getting her hand back, fingers spread, driving her hand over the top of the ball and get, getting lots of top spin. Good. We're staying with our theme here and, and, and that being you got to have a relaxed arm as we swing through the ball. So we focused on the hand ball contact. Now we're going to do a little bit in terms of how to develop a relaxed wrist. And one of the really easy things that we do is we'll have a partner hold up some tissue and they hold it at pretty much full extension. And now what Taylor's gonna do with a relaxed wrist is just get this motion going on. And if she's really good at it and goes really fast, she'll start, she'll start shredding some of this tissue. Or if she has long fingernails, she might start shredding it too. So I just hold it and she goes as fast as she can Good, and she tries to shred shred the paper. Let me let me stop it for a second. So she, if it's relaxed, her wrist comes all the way back, then all the way through. So it's a big motion. And a common mistake is people to get they get small with their wrists and just do this. So it's a big motion. Okay, finish up here, and then we'll go on time. Like we'll go like 30 seconds for this, and you'll be surprised. At least your I think your players will be surprised how fatigued their forearms get. So that's part one of what we do. So when we, we, we dovetail this into, when I attack the ball, you can relax for a second. When I attack the ball, I wanna make sure that my wrist is relaxed and coming through the ball. And I think a common mistake a lot of players make is they have a stiff wrist and they lose ball control and certainly lose velocity. Now we build on this where she's gonna face me a little bit and now start incorporating her upper body but the top end stays the same. She still is snapping her wrist at the top, but now it's a full, full arm swing. Okay, where her elbow comes back, there's some, there's some hip rotation and shoulder rotation into it. And if we're lucky, we start shredding the tissue. Okay, so we'll go a little faster, a little faster, where now it's relaxed. Okay, and we'll, we'll talk in a second about building into a full arm swing. Okay, last one, good. But one of the things we emphasize when we're developing full arm swing is not stopping at the end. So we want this to be a continuous motion, not a stop and go motion. Okay, so again, very simple to do, but I think it incorporates some pretty important concepts of a relaxed wrist as you put your hand on the so ball. For, for the first part of this video, we've been focusing mostly on handball contact, having the fingers spread and relaxed, and having the wrist relaxed. And I can't underscore the importance of, of good handball contact and lots of top spin on the ball. So we start with that, and now we're gonna build to kind of what the whole arm swing needs to look like. And in, in general, here are the concepts that we're, that we're shooting for. One is, kind of face the camera, is we wanna make sure that we get a lot of upper body rotation into the attack. And I think a common mistake that players make is as they jump, they get into this, this posture where you know the left arm comes up, but also so does the right arm. Okay, you can just relax your left arm for a second. From here, this is a problem because what I see more often than what I'd like to see with players is they get a high hand and then their arm swing starts to resemble something like this. Okay, so they're almost you know, slapping at the ball as opposed to attacking it. So what we want to emphasize is as they're jumping, so they're leaving the ground, is we want to get where we're facilitating upper body rotation. 
and this is the move we want. So as the right hand gets to about to her eyes, she's going to start bringing the elbow back. And the concept we really want to emphasize is the elbow goes from low, relatively low, too high. Bring your left arm down as we swing. There. So it goes, again, out, just relax. Go low. Then she rotates it high. And I think the biggest mistake that coaches make, and I hear it a lot when coaches are working with the team, they say, get your elbow up. I think that's a mistake. So players will get their elbow up. But where do you go from here? And where players tend to go is they go from high to low and you get a lot of this type of, of contact into the ball. So again, we want to make sure we go from, the elbow comes back, we go from low, then she rotates her elbow up, now she finishes high. So I'm just gonna just relax your arm, we'll go through it. So it's gonna be low, rotate up, and high. Last thing we'll talk about, and we'll have her hit some balls off of a box, is her, her hand never stops. So what we do is here, and her hand just does a circle around the elbow. And this all of a sudden starts resembling what we were doing with the tissue. Okay, where it's here, high, now there she snaps over the top. So this all starts becoming connected now. It's now putting all the pieces together. It's here, elbow comes back, not up, it comes back. And because the elbow comes back, look at all the rotation she's going to get into the ball and now as she comes through she rotates her whole upper body into the ball. So that's the direction we're heading. Same different view and this will kind of give you a better idea of the, the, the amount of rotation. So she gets her right hand to about her eyes, her elbow comes back and so she gets all this upper body rotation going into the ball. Now as she swings she rotates both her hips forward her elbow up and swings through. So kind of go on your own for a couple. So it's back, rotate, elbow up and through. Okay? Again, we want to emphasize the hand just does a circle around the elbow. So it's just a circle. Okay? It's not a back and forth. So the hand never stops. Okay? And that's where the importance of just being relaxed as you go through the swing is, is underscored. So you can't do that if you have a stiff arm or if, if you're coming from your shoulder. It has to be elbow wrist. Okay, so this is a drill we do a lot, by a lot, I mean every day, where we'll get kids on boxes and all they're gonna do is do a two-hand toss and then work on the things that we've been talking about, where it's two-hand toss, elbow comes here, back, lots of rotation, and just snap over the top of the ball. The thing that we tell our players is I'm not that interested in how hard they hit the ball. What I am interested in is how much top spin do they put on the ball. So if their wrist is relaxed and they're coming over the top, there'll be lots of top spin. If you get bad contacts or very slow top spin, that's a red flag. That means you really have to accentuate some, uh, some of the mechanics in terms of getting top spin on the ball. So the drill itself will look like this. So it'll be a two hand toss and then just over the top Lots of top spin on the ball. So a point of emphasis needs to be how, how she's going to finish. So as you can see, she'll finish like, like so, where her, her wrist has came over the ball, she's in this shape, kind of with a, a U shape with her wrist, and that will impart topspin. And as we said, that's the key to this drill. Lots of topspin. Go ahead. Good. Okay, one more. Good. Now, an important part of this is what your non-hitting arm does. And the analogy I use with our players a lot is attacking is just, it's a throwing motion. It's a glorified throwing motion. And I'll ask them to look at a baseball pitcher throwing a ball, a, a tennis player serving. It's all this very similar mechanics relative to when the hitting arm comes back, we want to make sure that the non-hitting arm stays inside the body line.
okay? So many times, and you see it a lot, especially with the younger age groups, is they get nothing out of the left arm. So we want to make sure the left arm, we, we say pull the chain. And what we want the, the attacker to do, uh, let me get, I'll have you demonstrate this, is once they get in the motion that we've talked about, left arm comes up, right elbow comes back, then we want to pull the chain as she rotates through. And it's always to the body midline. What happens if they don't go to the midline? If she pulls the chain and goes away, then you get this dipping motion going on. And we want to try to stay tall. So if she stays inside of her body midline and pulls the chain someplace here, she can stay tall and go directly through the ball. So we'll see what this looks like doing the same box drill we just finished up with. Two hand toss, and as you can see, she'll finish with her hand towards the midline someplace. And I'm not real fussy that they have to finish exactly someplace, but it has to be inside the body midline, wherever the player feels comfortable. So Taylor will finish and her hand comes to the middle. One more. Good. Okay, the next thing we're gonna do is start connecting the dots a little bit. And you know, this, this video is gonna mostly focus on the arm swing. So we're not gonna spend a lot of time in terms of, of approaching or leaving the ground. But we do wanna, you know, actually start hitting balls that are in the air. So we start pretty simple dovetailing on what we've already talked about in terms of just the mechanics I'll toss balls two balls right in front of her and she's just going to try and work on now everything we've talked about but actually hitting a ball that's coming from a setter or a tosser okay back up you're good ready we always want to have the ball right in front of her right shoulder so we want to make sure Lots of upper body rotation. So when she, when the ball is coming to her, she's going to open her hips up. Go ahead. And get in that posture. Her hips are open, and then she'll come through and attack the ball. Ready? Good. Last one. Go. Good. Part two of this is the same drill except we want to really work on every time the hitter attacks the ball and if we're going to have efficient arm mechanics the ball has to be the same place every time which underscores the importance of foot movement so every time an attacker hits the ball they should be the ball should be right in front of their hitting shoulder so if that means they have to move their body or the purpose of a hitting approach is get their body where every time the ball is right there. And so often, the contact point is dictated by the set, and that should never happen. Move the feet to the ball, and then arrange where the ball is right in front of, of the attacking shoulder. So all we do is the same type of drill, and as a coach, I'm gonna move her around a little bit. So she starts facing me, like as if her, her normal takeoff position. So yeah, left foot forward, yeah. So that's how she would normally hit if she's hitting from left side. Left foot's forward, hips are open to the ball. She's going to keep her feet in that position. But I won't necessarily toss the ball to her. It might be a little bit to her right, a little bit to her left, a little bit behind, a little bit in front. So she has to, just using two steps, right, left, jump and swing. If it's behind her, right, left, jump and swing. If it's to her right, right left jump and swing so her feet are always in the same spot so it'll look something like this ready here good so i'll toss this one a little bit behind her so she backs up and the ball's still at her right shoulder i'll toss, toss this one a little bit towards me to her right she has to move and jump okay i'll toss this one in front of her a little bit right left and jump so she just has to move and get the idea of right left here and there's the ball every time and this is a great drill to get players where their last two steps are taking them to the ball as opposed to the last two steps just running to the net 
and then they reach sideways, backwards, forwards to the ball. Very simple drill, but I would spend a lot of time on this so the players get used to right, left, there's the ball every time. Okay, same thing, different view. Again, the focus is her footwork when she leaves the ground, the ball is right in front of her hitting shoulder when uh, upon contact. Right. Okay, this one will go behind her. Okay, notice even though she had to move backwards for the ball, we'll do that again, even though she had to move back to the ball, when she landed her weight was forward moves back and her weight's forward. If she doesn't move her feet back, she'll land and she'll still be falling backwards. Okay, last one and let's, uh, let's move you to your right. So you're moving towards me. Here, there. Good. In these last clips, Taylor will um, demonstrate what we think is a pretty good arm swing for a young player. And as we go through this in slow motion, you'll see how she draws her elbow back. She gets lots of shoulder and upper body rotation into the ball. Nice relaxed wrist as she drives her hand over the top of the ball and contacts it at, at full extension. So these are the exact things we're working on. And all this takes a lot of time, a lot of repetition, and a lot of paying attention to good spiking mechanics and making sure that we're paying attention to the throwing action, high contact, and driving the hand through the ball.